Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we're going to be covering this awesome dynamic paint uh, simulation. So this is something I posted to Instagram. A lot of people were asking me about it. Um, let's go ahead and hop right into the tutorial and I'll show you guys how to create something. First of all, I want to go ahead and jump into my original file here um, just to show you guys. You know, this is indeed dynamic paint. Let me go to solid view here. Let's play this back. As you can see, we have a, um, this is a full looping animation. However, it doesn't quote unquote loop, but um, it would if with a little bit of extra video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and break this down. File, new, general. We're just going to be in a blank uh, default document right here. I'm just going to delete the light. I will keep the camera in. Let's add in a cube to our scene. Let's go ahead and tap into edit mode. Sorry, let's go to add a bevel first. Let's just add a bevel. We'll give it, I don't know five or so segments i think that looks pretty good there you know what let's give it eight go ahead and apply that tab into edit mode i just want you guys to select every single face here you are going to right click subdivide and then i think i'm just going to subdivide this like i don't know like 12 times oh let's do 15. all right cool Tab out of edit mode. Now, as you guys can see, we have a lot of geometry to work with, which is great. Now you could go ahead and apply your dynamic paint here, but I'm not gonna do it yet. I'm actually gonna add a remesh modifier. Click on the smooth option. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a octree depth of seven. I'm gonna apply that, go back into edit mode, and this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is the amount of kind of like vertices and angles. It's just perfect, this is exactly what we need. Let me go ahead and give this a quick save, and I'm just going to save this paint tutorial. Awesome. Now, the next thing we need to do is, of course, add dynamic paint. So, in the physics tab, which I was corrected on Instagram with, click on dynamic paint. We're going to add a canvas in right here on the right. So, you guys see we have our canvas. Under the surface type, I'm going to choose waves, um, and I am going to be copying the settings that I had from the other one before. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick save. I'm going to add in sphere. I'm going to scale it way down. Go to my side view. Zoom in here. Bring this down. Make sure everybody on Instagram can see this properly. There we go. Um, I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more. You guys can make this whatever size you want. Right click. Auto smooth. I'm also going to shade this smooth as well. Now, this sphere is going to be what interacts with our dynamic. I'm going to go ahead and add a dynamic property to the sphere. Instead of canvas, I'm going to choose brush. Click on add brush. Now here's where it gets interesting. I press play. I move this thing around. You can now see that we have some interaction with our canvas. Now this is really the magic of it all. At this point, this is really all you need to know for the tutorial. However, I'm going to show you how to animate this. Um, which, what's really cool about this is it really does look like water and I'm going to show you the settings that I used for mine. You guys can copy those. It's just so much fun to play with this. Um, now, the way to get it even smoother, you probably guessed it. Go ahead and click on your cube. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Now, you can bump this up to two. And what will happen is, go ahead and play this now. See, if I, press, if I pause this real quick, it's going to make Blender crash. So I'm going to bump it down to one. You can see how much smoother you can get. See the clear difference here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to center. I'm going to go back to frame one. I'm just going to do a really quick loop. I'll do it over, I guess, 120 frames or so. Go to our top down view, select our sphere, completely zero it out on the X and Y. And then I'm going to go to my side view. And I think I'm going to have it start right here. So go ahead and insert a keyframe. We'll just do the location. I'll zoom in on my timeline down here. I'll drag it. See it. Um, I'm going to move forward to frame five, start right there, G, Z to bring this down on the Z axis, and then insert your keyframe again. Make sure you're using location. Now, if we play this back right now, this is what we'll get. Pretty simple. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to turn the subdivision off on the port so it doesn't the computer. So again, this is our first step right here. Once the, the um, sphere drops down, I'm going to go ahead and move it to the so I'm going to go ahead to frame 20. Actually, let's do 25. Every 20 frames, we'll move it. Now, I just want it to be on the very edge. So I'm going to go ahead and select one for the Y, and I'm going to insert another. Now, if we play this back, 
have something like this. Now it just stops there on the edge. Now we got to bring it down a little bit lower. So from 25 to 45, I will bring it down on the Z axis to zero. Right. Insert a keyframe, and now we should have something like this. I think you guys get where this is going. Now I'm going to have it brought to this edge. So from 45 to 65, drag it along this edge. Now, if you hold control, it should snap into place. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Holding control, it should snap right into place. Go to five. Now, the best part about keyframes is you can copy them. So I'm going to copy this very first keyframe. I'm going to go ahead and drag that out to five. And then I'm going to make my last frame. So, as you guys can see on the timeline, I have everything set up. This is our current animation. You can see that this sphere makes it all the way around the cube. Now, if you wanted this to loop properly, you would need to either do some video editing or really mess with your settings so that everything bounces back to the original state. Now, here's what's really cool. Again, see how choppy this looks? That is where our subdivision. You can see how that immediately gets corrected when I turn the subdivision modifier back on. Now, before we get into the actual settings, let's go ahead and add some materials real quick. Simply go to rendered view. I'm using cycles here. Let's add an HDRI in here. I think I'll choose one right here. Awesome. Go ahead and click on your cube. And I'm just going to add a glass shader. We're going to make that IOR 1.33 with zero roughness. We snap to our camera. You can see that we are already lined up, which is really nice. The only thing is we're lined up on the wrong side. So going back into solid view, I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to completely rotate it the other way. Then I'm going to give it a 40, a negative to be rotated there we go so we should be able to be on the right spot now i'm just going to position my camera at five and negative five and i'm just going to move the camera sorry wrong coordinates negative five and five there we go give ourselves a nice that then we'll do negative 135 for our degree and now we're nice and locked in here so that when we look through our camera lens everything's perfect I'm going to go ahead and enable depth of field. I'm also going to change this camera mode to orthographic. Then going to select my sphere for the focus object. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust my scale so we're nice and zoomed. Now, as you guys remember, back a couple. As you guys remember, and this is glitching out a little bit, on the proper mode. I'm actually on the wrong angle. However, we look at this, this looks really good. Now, if you want that extra blurred effect, we can go ahead and bump this down to the top of one. But again, the more blur you add, in my opinion, the worse it looks. I'm going to go ahead and give the sphere a nice metallic shader, a low, a low roughness, like that. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do before I explain the dimensions of the project, I'm going to move this over here, rotate the camera like so, snap back to the camera, or rotate it at here uh, 225 should do it now as you guys remember i actually had a vertical video style so 1080 by 1920 will be be your ideal dimension for this of course you're going to have to back up the scale project as well this is starting to look really good i'm actually really starting to like the way this looks um at this point that is pretty much it the only other things that i added were those pillars on the top and the bottom but if we go ahead and play this back, and I'm going to play this back, see, we have our cube, and our, um, our sphere is running along the side of the cube. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn my f-stop up to 2, so you can see it's a little bit better. This looks really nice, though, and it's really satisfying. Now, here's where the interesting part comes in. You guys can experiment with all types of settings. For example, you change the IOR of this glass, you can make it a little bit different. If you change your environment, you're going to get completely different result. This is where I really like to just pop in different environments, just see what kind of result I'm getting. Try a couple of different. I do like the indoor environments. This is a studio environment. Of course, you're going to get a very dark result because there's not a lot of lighting involved. And then this is one of my favorites, these outdoor ones, because you get that nice kind of lighter feel to it. Um, but of course, experiment with these different lighting setups. 
And you can add area lights. You can pretty much do whatever you want at this point. Totally up to you guys. Um, I'm going to try this one. Not really what I was looking for. I actually didn't mind. I didn't mind that one. I thought that looked kind of nice. Now, if you want even more contrast, you can add a background behind this. Or you can just render this as a transparent uh, image and you can just add anything you like. Um, another really fun thing that I actually didn't think about until now, but I'll just quickly add it in. You could definitely do this. You could go ahead and take your camera, you could add a constraint to the camera. And I'm just going to do copy location. And I'm going to do the Z location. I'm going to uncheck everything except for the Z. I'm going to click on sphere. Adjust my angle here. Sorry, I'm going to adjust the offset. I'm going to do an offset. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom really far in. Now, let's go ahead and double check that constraint. Now, this is really cool because you can actually follow, follow this cube. Choose Actually, I'll just choose X, Y, and Z. Let's see what it looks like. Pretty interesting. You can see we're following this cube. However, I can make the background black so that you now, so you can see that you're losing a lot of that detail. But that's just kind of a fun thing you can add. I don't really do a lot of constraints in my work, but I do think this looks pretty nice. Um, what's really fun about this is you can take any one of these frames and it's going to look pretty good just because it does look like real liquid. And if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the constraint off for a second. You could actually make this not water. You could make it something completely different. Instead of a uh, glass, you could 100% make this a principled BSDF. High metallic value, low roughness. Changes to copper color, like something like that. Now you have a completely different animal. And then you can turn your subdivision back on. And as you guys can see, it's a really fun animation. Now, the only other thing I'll mention that you can add is you can actually just bake this out. So instead of having to constantly play this back at a low frame rate, if you go over to your canvas settings on the right, under the cache tab, you can simply click on bake, let this bake on through, and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Much better. Now it's playing back at 25 frames a second. Now, as soon as I turn that subdivision surface back on viewport, it can be a little slower. However, Man, does that look cool. Go ahead and pop into rent. I'm going to switch this back to my glass. Well, water, rather. Remember, 1.33 is the IOR of water. If you want to make it a little bit more stylized, you can make the water blue. You don't have to. In fact, it's probably better if you don't because water typically is only blue because it's um, reflecting the surrounding environment. No, so I'm going to go ahead and back. This looks really cool. I like it a lot. Um, the only other thing I'll do is maybe adjust the depth of field. It's kind of fun because since we targeted this as our focus object, even though it's slightly out of focus right now, um, we're going to get that kind of shifting focal effect. Even like right here, you turned off your depth of field and you rendered this out. It just looks so cool. So there's a lot of cool things we can do with dynamic paint. I think this looks awesome. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I'm going to go over some render settings. I'm going to turn my depth of field back on just for this one. If you guys wanted to add a platform underneath of that, you totally could. Uh, render settings. Here we go. Denoiser is on. We're using optics max samples. I'm going to go ahead and choose 50. Then I'm going to bump up my resolution to 200%. And then for light path settings, my max bounces, I just leave them all on 20. I think that looks great. Back to solid view. Render image. Let's see what we get. And we're really only using three things here, the camera, the cube, and the sphere. There's really not a lot to it. Um, looking at about a uh, 10-second render here, not bad. Now, one thing to consider with these is this noise. So you're going to get a lot of noise with the depth of field. That's just something that naturally comes with it. But overall, it doesn't look terrible at all. You could bump that up to 150. I'll just try a quick render with 150, and we'll take a look at the difference. I love talking about render settings just because it's something I really didn't understand a lot at first. I still don't. Like, I'm not an expert, but I feel like I know so much more, and I know how to get a really quick render out of, like, simple things like this. Uh, let's see what we get. Denoiser hasn't kicked in quite yet. We got a couple more seconds, and there it is. 
So you can still see we're getting a lot of noise because we have a really intense depth of field. That was about a 20 second render, but it doesn't look bad. Um, let's go back to my original document, save this one. So this original document, I just want to take a look and see what URI I use. This one right here, you can see I have an interesting setup. I do have a plane sitting behind. So if you guys are ever trying to accomplish this exact effect, my HDRI is a like a sky HDRI seamless. And then this right here is just like a plane background. So that is how I get that kind of um, see-through effect that makes it look really nice. Uh, I am using an IOR of two on my glass and it is slightly hinted blue. One more thing I want to show you guys, even though I said I was done, provide as much value as possible. Instead of choosing subdivision here, and this is interesting because I haven't tried this yet, so I don't even know what the result's going to look like. You could add another remesh modifier, go to blocks, uncheck, remove, disconnected. And then you could just see what that's going to look like. Now you have this kind of pixelated look to your water. Kind of interesting. Doesn't really look that great. Let's try voxel. Whoa, voxel looks kind of cool. That's kind of fun. You can see if I go into solid view, you can really see what this looks like. So now, what's interesting about something like this is if you're going for a style that's like, even something like that is kind of fun. It's just fun to play with these modifiers. I actually like 0.1 voxel size, but isn't that fun, guys? I think it is. Kind of a blast just messing around with this. Now, of course, I'm not going to be using that. I'm going to be having this look more like realistic water. Um, the only other thing I will say is I'm going to go back to my original document so you guys can copy the physics settings on the right. So on the right-hand side, guys, if you're interested, these are my physics settings that I used. For the time scale, I just chose one. Speed, I bumped that up to two. Damping, 0 0.01. Spring is 0 0.01. Smoothness is two, and then I kind of keyframe some stuff at the end to make the water bounce back. As you guys can see, if you look right here, you can see that the water begins to kind of dissipate back into its original cube. And then my goal was to transition this in Premiere and um, have a seamless transition. But this, overall, this looks really cool, and it's really satisfying to watch. You can see that the liquid looks completely different in this one because I adjusted the settings and the time scale. So Definitely worth playing with these settings, guys. Um, there's a lot we can accomplish with this program. So, yeah, love teaching this stuff. A lot of fun. Um, and, and like I said, if you even just zoom in here and just you pop on that rendered view, I mean, that, that can be some album artwork there. You know, this is really fun stuff, and it's really powerful because even though it is a physics simulation, we're really not, we're really not doing that much intense work with the computer. Like the, I don't think my computer has a very difficult time with this. I mean, really, look what happens when I really, really zoom in there. I mean, that looks like an abstract piece of art, right? There's a lot of just fun stuff we can do. Even, even right here, imagine you have a really cool album artwork with just this sphere, maybe just dipping down into the water. I mean, there really is just so much you can do with Blender. I can't even imagine what you guys will create. Even like, let me go a, a, a couple more frames ahead. This moment where the sphere kind of dips over the edge, very powerful. So anyways, I wanted to show you guys that. I thought you would find it really useful and just super powerful. Um, I really do hope you guys enjoyed that. If there's any questions, I'll take them now. Um, I am going to go ahead and stop the YouTube tutorial, but you guys are more than welcome to ask questions. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, bye guys. Take it easy. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Oh, please subscribe also. We just passed 20K subscribers. Super happy about that. All right, guys. Peace out, YouTube.